So once again, uh, Bo Sanders over at Homebrew Christianity has lured me out from my electronic hole and or cave uh, to comment on something that he has uh, posted over on Homebrew Christianity. I'll link that on the Image of Fish. Uh, great little article. It's titled something like The Problem, air quotes and or scare quotes, uh, with Pete Rollins. And this is a great time to go read that. If you haven't yet, check the link on Homebrewed or on the Image of Fish. I'll wait. Done waiting. If you didn't pause there, you, you could have hit the pause button. Um, you should probably know that by now because you use the internet. Uh, three things about this that uh, caught my attention. First, his use of the medium is the message, which touches on that uh, patron saint of the internet age, Marshall McLuhan, who's uh, the formative thinker for me. Uh, second, he talked about Pete Rollins in general. Third, he talked about Pete Rollins and the problem with Pete Rollins. All three of those things are things that get my attention. Um, so uh, the basic jumping off point for me um, is Bo's playing or wondering with this idea, grappling with the tension with the fact that Pete Rollins, who's constantly uh, talking about the idolatry of certainty and how not to do things, uh, specifically speaking of God, really wanted to take that apophatic path, which is a taking away path, um, stripping away that which is not of God, asking those questions, challenging those traditional stories, uh, embodying a kind of um, gut-based faithful deconstruction, this guy is the guy who stands in front of a crowd and lectures, telling people to challenge systems of thought. So there's this weird tension that Bo um, acknowledges regarding the fact that a lot of what Pete Rollins does is didactic lectureship, um, and uh, it's funny, <laughs> uh, potentially ironic, but in the very least, uh, full of tension because it's in fact very didactic and he is an authority and he is a voice that people listen to and yet what he's calling people to do is challenge. Now I don't think those things are an absolute opposition but I do think there are some things that um, that are, are possible, some techniques that can be taken that, that are different. And I think Bo is exactly right to bring up this question of the medium and the message because the fact of the matter is that in many ways, what McLuhan's insight is, is those things are interchangeable. So, for example, um, I have uh, for a couple of years and just released in June this, this film, Made as Makers. It's made for congregations to inspire conversation, to cause questioning, very similar themes, very resonant with a lot of Pete's work. And I made this movie specifically without myself being the focal character. It's a 44 minute long movie about the, the intersection of creativity and faith and how people articulate their own versions and visions of how God is at work in their lives, what they hope for in the church and what faith is for them. And in the 44 minutes, which I hope are played in, in various churches and congregations and faith communities and, and emergent cohorts and pub theologies and however you wanna slice it up, I'm only in there five minutes. Why? Because um, my calling in this particular piece uh, of work and as made in makers was to gather those voices together to use whatever small sliver of clout and cachet that I have to draw attention to those voices that would not have been heard um, possibly were it not for me. Uh, the medium there matters. And even so, the very first review that came out, uh, Yo Rocco, uh, great guy, generally positive review, but one of the things that he said in it was, I wish there had been more of Khaled. He, you know, he's the interesting, passionate one. These other people, you know, uh, they're great, I guess, but, you know, he's the really interesting one. And, and here's the bottom line. To some degree, to the extent that I am interesting, I attribute that to some giftedness that I believe has been bestowed by God, uh, nurtured, sustained, and held accountable to by my faith community. And I'm grateful every day that I get to exercise those gifts of articulation, uh, of, of education, and, and of kind of speaking this good news. But 
when I do that, I have to be aware of the fact that those articulations and that giftedness combined with my, my talents and skills make people look at me. And on a good day, maybe I could take people looking at me and listening to me and turn them from me to the spirit that quickens, right? That, that spirit and power that is, that, is, that is in Christ and the Holy Spirit. But that's on a good day. And that's still not the same thing as taking that, the kind of the, the looks and the gaze and the attention from other people and directing it via whatever sliver of cachet and uh, kind of social capital I have to those who, who aren't seen, people who aren't heard, people who aren't listened to. And I think that it's important that we do that kind of thing, especially those of us that are white men, um, because we have that mark of privilege. People do listen to us. We sometimes have significant Twitter followings or blog readership or book sales. And don't we, in fact, have a responsibility to you know, bring rise to a voice that isn't heard? Um, I'm not saying that Pete Rollins should shut up and never talk again and only let uh, some person who's not a white man talk. I'm saying that sometimes I think Bo's got it just right, that if we only can function in the medium that is the medium of, of patriarchy and of kind of domination and is the domain of the principalities and powers, you know, to say didactic propositional thinking, leadership, even if it's about challenging authority, making questions, not being sure, uncertainty, uh, and uh, apophasis, if it's still inscribed in the medium, that is, the method of uh, those uh, oppressive systems, uh, we're going to be wrapped up in something that is uh, maybe not desirable. Which is a segue to something that I thought a lot about and I've had conversations with a number of folks about, and it's something that just kind of digs out my heart with a spoon whenever I hear it talked about, which is the fact that people want to claim all the time that the emergent church has no leadership, which I say is bupkis. Now, I understand that no one's getting a, an emergent church uh, check. No one's in charge of the emergent church uh, committee. No one's making millions from the, the emergent church as an organization. But the fact is, when people go to learn about the emergent church, certain people's books and blogs uh, are recommended. And if we would just acknowledge, those of us that consider ourselves participants in the emergent conversation, if we would just acknowledge the fact that these people are thought leaders, if not organizational leaders, and those people who that we would acknowledge as thought leaders would take on the mantle of leadership, well then they would be able to take the direction of all the eyes and attention and focus that's on them and point it towards someone who's not them. By deflecting and saying there's no such thing as leadership, there's no such thing as leadership, those who are functionally leaders, Pete, who is one of them, just by virtue of, of his own giftedness and his own powerful contributions, by him not acknowledging his role as a leader in the kind of conversation that's happening in the Britain Church, well then, he also doesn't have to then use his cachet to point the attention towards those whose voices aren't heard as much. And... I think that no one's really to blame for this so much, but we miss an opportunity, those of us that have any uh, cachet or clout, we miss an opportunity every time um, we pass by the, the power of a marginalized voice and don't lift it up instead of getting our own two cents out. I am just as guilty of it as anyone else. Um, and I hope that as we consider the method and the content of what we're communicating out to the world, we realize that those of us that do have uh, some social capital can and maybe ought use it to uh, give rise to the voices who are not heard as much. Perhaps they've got some things to say in ways that um, aren't being said. Um, thoughts? Questions, comments, concerns?